let's see what happens when we have the new scramble team, then Shaggy attacking. Um, I say Shaggy attacking, um, that's what tends to happen when you just give him crits and just let him go nuts with it. <laughs> anyway, I'm look at the teams though. Um, blue team's looking. Re uh, that can work. Actually, yeah, that's nice. Reasonably, that's a nice, reasonably good balanced team. Yeah, that's a uh, yeah, that's that's a good standard. You know, good health, good health. You know, Switzerland's economy. Yeah. Yep, yep. Uh, red team. Uh, yeah, that can work as well. I mean, that's that's a lot more defensive looking. Strangely. Yeah, that. Uh, yeah, I mean, considering some of the names on there as well, I mean, that they haven't really done anything to switch up from their attacking uh, mode, really. It does seem to be pretty much the same loadout as it was, so to speak, but, you know, can work either way, you know, Shaggy seems to be able to do the same thing both ways and it works fine. Here's the thing. Actually, one thing I'm noticing here is peace. I mean, look at that. He got two DOMs, and he's like second from bottom in the game. I think this guy's been very focused on what he's doing. He's playing scout and going for key targets. So, kudos to that guy. Well, there goes the Ubers. Um, there goes the scouts. <laughs> That's just confusing. It's like you know, from Epic Unicorns. Wait, what? Where did you guys go? there, punishing them for their hubris of getting behind him. Uh, to be fair with snipers, just getting around them, they hate when you don't move around too fast. Especially when he has to turn. There's Shaggy. Ooh, and uh, Red's actually holding. A bit more than expected. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately there was a you know, a crits attempt that could have gone very, very nicely, and you know, Blue managed to throw out an Uber pretty much at the perfect time because the crits had just gone off, and it kind of basically meant they had to go and hide and heal up before anything could get killed. Yeah, I hate when that happens. When basically you go to, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna kill everyone. Oh wait, no, everybody's invulnerable. I hate when this happens. One thing I will say though, um, Red have been up a fight though. I mean, Blue's kind of getting in there, but they're not getting in there comfortably. Oh, Shaggy's in trouble. Oh, he just did it though. He managed to take down Tasu's sentry just in the nick of time though. Three minutes twenty-four, and we're nearing the barn of doom. The other thing. Oh, I, oh god, look at that Uber, he's trying to get up the stairs. And it did. Uh, what happened there? I mean, I thought there would be like a pyro puffing it off, but no. No, there you go, they got that made it way home. Yeah, I was pretty much expecting... That's quite odd to see a pyro manage to take down pretty much an entire sentry nest without any problems. I think it was pretty much just a case of really lucky sort of aiming in regards to the other players and the sentry. And managing to take it down while it was wrangled, obviously, you know, then is sort of basically just chilling for two or three seconds and you can safely kill it. Yeah, that's the thing. Actually, also with the sentry looking at something else completely different, that's also really helpful. <laughs> I mean, there's that golden moment when you realise it's actually just going from level two to level three, like, oh my god, I have a second to kill it. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to look at the adventures of Epic Killer, see what he's up to. Bold Adventures of Epic Killer. I'd be meaning to keep an eye on this guy because he has been doing what I like with a terrorism scout. Well, to be fair, he's not really gone for teleporters. Okay, no, actually, he's gone way too far around. <laughs> oh no! I found just I found your medics. I'm gonna run around. Okay, he's done it right. He's basically just annoying them, and then <laughs> that was nicely done, actually. Uh, he completely distracted that back end of uh, medics and stuff just long enough for Blue to get a bit of an advance in. Yeah, I, I love I love just how sprawling this map is purely because, you know, if you're on if you're on red, once you get to this sort of point in the game, you know you've got enough space to kind of run around as a scout and you know not get killed. And you know at this point again, as on Blue, <laughs> again you know you've got a good amount of backfield where. 
you know, red really shouldn't be checking, but you can make them check. Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing I like with scouts, I mean. Just keeping the enemy team off balance a little, and you know, that's what every kid is up to doing, and he's, he's doing a good job of it, actually, you know. That in conjunction with spies is hilarious. You get a good spy and a good scout doing that action. Oh, God. You know, red itchy bottom mode for the enemy team. Like, <laughs> what's going on here? Why is there shit in our rear? <laughs> Wait a minute, that, that sounds too real. Um, look at blue team, though. They're actually, they're coming back now. Oh my god, that was such an... <laughs> System X there, playing the most campingest heavy. He nearly got away with that, but for, you know, Ubers. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that Uber timing really came down to any sort of skill. That was just pure, perfect timing to screw over the heavy. Yeah, it was like, wait, I'm getting shot in the ass, better medic. <laughs> but yeah, 9 at 17, blue team are doing well. Um... But as uh, you know, there's a semi four. This red team, though, they, they've got defensive promise. So I'm like, you know what? They could they could win this as well. They're doing okay. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised actually to see a very similar outcome to last round because it kind of has been played in a similar way. You know, possibly blue have been a little bit faster than the last match, but red have been there the whole way, basically at the very least stalling them. You know. Blue have had to fight to get around every corner, at the least. Yeah, un un contrary to the map's name, there's not really so much for Blitz in this game at all, right, really. <laughs> well, they're saying that second point to th third point has been relatively uncontested. Oh, no. Wildcat, unfortunately, has found the Kerouac curse of I'm going to backstab some... Oh, wait, no, that's not a back. <laughs> Uh, it's quite unlucky his class. Oh, there's, there's Shaggy in there. Oh, wow! He didn't actually take it down. What happened there? Um, I think the I think it was a very high angle. He might have missed quite a few of the shots. Or, Tasu there, f being a boss and basically fixing it at range. That was nicely done. <laughs> 9 minutes 43 on the clock, though. I mean, again, are we going to see another long grinding game where we red basically wins this oh. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens but the problem is you know blue managed to get in there and put up such a good sort of not so much a, an attack but just a really really good forward annoyance and you know they've pretty much blue have managed to get pretty much the maximum amount of time from that last point that they could have done and you know <laughs> I, not to say that they're gonna have an easy time but you know, they don't have to rush too much. They can come forward with a calculated attack. Bubble there, getting the uh, me uh, and it, lack of NHS healthcare annoyance, where basically needs a medic, has asked 14 times. Uh, the I think that's what's called the Chozo effect of medic! Medic! Fucking medic! Um, yeah. That's the thing, though. I mean, he's got a point, though. They are a little bit short of maybe a medic. This is the thing, actually. I have to find the more tense the game, the more medics you need. And actually, when you start easing up on the medics, that's when your game starts going out the window. Yeah, although that said, you know, I think, you know, obviously there is a point where lots of medics does become a detriment. Possibly sort of at the five or six mark. That's going a little bit too far. Well, saying that now, I mean, look at blue team that in to win this. Blake Belladonna attempts to run into the heavy to kill him with a foot. That was not, that was brave, but, oh, oh wow, room clearer in chief, moving answers there, nicely done. <laughs> Here's the thing though, red are really, you know, caught with trousers down, they've got to get their defences back up again. Yeah, and the problem is as well, where the cart is, it's that corner really is one of the most difficult parts of this room. You know, now they've got the ability really to just jump down from anywhere and be able to touch the cart. So they've kind of got that sort of level of security, but they are letting it move back. Oh dear, here goes here goes the Ubers again. One thing I will say actually, Blue are using that top room excellently well. It's one thing I do tend to find actually. People teams that don't use that room, the lovely flanking unassailable angle, yeah, you tend to lose because you're not keeping that thing locked down. And actually, if you get an early sentry in there, in that, in that window as a red team, and just make sure people can't get up the stairs, 
That's a real bummer because you can counter attack from a nice unknown angle. But here's the thing that red team are wising up though. Ooh, bubble there. Being a boss just takes down the teleporter. That was probably the best thing he could do, and it, that was nicely done. He just got rid of that telly. I mean, personally speaking, in my opinion, the most dangerous weapon in Engineer's arsenal is that teleporter. It, you know, you can make a game go so many ways. We said before, it's like they're kind of like the team shepherd in a way. Like, go this way, mill around in this direction, go. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, a sentry will do lay down some really, really good firepower, but there's nothing better than, you know, getting two or three demo man and a soldier and a medic all in one place at one time, you know. That's going to be a lot more devastating than a sentry that's stuck somewhere. Oh, the other thing is also, you know, Gold Rush Stage 1, and you get that teleporter right in that arse end area of Red Team. And I built I built a base down there, and it's that evil feeling you get of de 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 deploying your entire team in the enemy's rear. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's born camp forever, bitches. <laughs> oh, it's rarely done, but it's so good. This, this is why I missed the um, Eureka effect, because that was so good for that, but, aww. Oh, I missed the Eureka effect. It used to be so good, but they nerfed it so hard. Yeah, I feel... I feel I don't get why, you know, there was so much butthurt over the sticky launcher and yet the, no one raised an eyebrow when the Eureka effect got nerfed. And, you know, there have been similar nerfs in the past where, you know, they've clearly destroyed a weapon, you know, basically taken all of its charm and no one cares and yet, you know, you make the sticky bomb launcher a little bit more balanced and suddenly all the hurt butts in the world. Yep. Oh, I agree with Tasu completely. The minigun didn't really need nerf. I mean, I was playing Heaven was like, to be fair though, it's one of those ineffectual nerfs I've seen. It doesn't really do much, although maybe a little bit. But I, I do feel that people get butt hurt from when they get killed by a heavy because it's like, what what the hell does the lumbering more on firing bullets do? How do he win? <laughs> but you need the lumbering heavy bullets. Stop pyros, destroy sentries with a short circuit guy on it. And just generally be a badass when he appears from nowhere. And also wear the best hat in the game. Oh yes, Chuck Steak. Who isn't here today. I think he's still alive. We're not saying he's dead, but... Um, we miss him. We miss him for his hats and general heavies. <laughs> Four minutes 11 and blue team are generally... Oh, hang on. Oh, Noob there just completely takes down Daddy Kazm. Daddy Kazm was like, yeah, I'm totally going to camp this guy up. And then he's like, nope. So much nope. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, dear. How did he know he was there? That's what I want to know. Maybe he was acting like, saw him in the corner and was like, okay, I'm going to turn around. And I'm going to jump and then turn around and then kill him before he doesn't know I know him there. And also, Bird Heavy, I think playing trollingly. I think he's new. Oh, man, there goes the Uber. Uh, uh, it's... Ooh, dear. Oh, Shaggy takes down the medic. Being around really helps. Oh! Pinky actually gets a see-through kill through his own teammate. Oh, I love it when that happens. <laughs> now, because the amount of times... You've ever had that thing where basically you've been playing Sniper and somebody's like, oh, I don't know where the Sniper is standing in front of him. And then... <laughs> You shoot through him, kill somebody, and then he gets shot in the head. And like, well, I had my body shot in front of me, and I got through him anyway. I have a I do love, I do love seeing that happen. But then, you know, at some point, sometimes there are. If you have got a sniper that is basically being useless, sometimes it is a good idea. You know, just stand in front of them for a couple of minutes, not a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. Let them know that they are crap. <laughs> yes. Oh, jeez. I mean. Uh, I think the rule of thumb is you don't need more than two snipers in a team. Or like, one thing I saw on the internet is basically, you know, medic. The people, the class that every you really need, nobody will ever play, and then they'll bitch, people bitching why there's no medic, will never play it. Like, we need another medic, uh, to remedy this problem, I'll play fifth sniper. 
Well, like, you know, when you get a fifth snipe, when you get like fourth snipe, I think you're just cod fanboys. God damn, you don't need iron sight everything. <laughs> yes, pipe mine. Chef X and there, getting too close to a heavy. 1 minute 53, this is looking quite ooh, tricky here. Camp, I think Blue can win this, but you know. Thanks, Party Mine. Um, what do you think is who's going to win this, man? I think Blue can win this. They've come so close so many times, but it's just every time they go to it's just not enough. Yeah, there was. There was a very, very good attempt there as well. There was a heavy and an uber demo man um, trying, trying to push in, but there was literally no one with them. And you know they managed to take down a sentry. They managed to take down a few people, but there was no one there to back them up once the uber ran out. And you know they were inevitably going to die. And yeah. that's kind of like I don't really know where most of blue is. Yeah, I think they're fading. I think morale is slipping. Also, what didn't happen helps that. Um Noob there with Ansi has got seven kills with a with a crit minigun. As we said, that thing is dangerous at long range because you've got to remember damage fall off doesn't isn't affected by critness. So yeah, if you just um, use crit bullets and get dual twenty seven damage at range and hit them five times, yeah, that's usually fatal. <laughs> but forty four seconds now. Um, we're gonna have to see a good old fashioned pub push here from Blue. They got they got to put it on their ass. Oh no. Red team is like, you in the attic, you better not be. I'm gonna come up there. The bubble watch, making sure teleporters don't exist up there. You know, this guy is really keeping an eye on that flank. Oh, he was so damn lucky. <laughs> Just missed the crit bullets. Oh, hang on, what's this? Last attempt from red, tense, blue sec. Oh, jeez. Oh my god, for three seconds, somebody better get on the car. Oh, criminy, four seconds. Medic just touches it, five seconds. Ooh. I don't know, I think that was the last of it. And Red have that. Oh, wow, that was a little bit tense. I said a pub pusher was coming in, and it kind of did, but didn't get there. <laughs> 